Hello everyone, welcome to Parade of Paws. I'm Officer Thomas Anderson with the Casa Grande Police Department and today with me I have Officer Mary Dill. She's the Animal Control Officer for the Casa Grande Animal Care and Adoption Center. Hello Mary, how are you today? I'm just fine, thank you Thomas. Excellent. Today we uh, have quite a few dogs to look at and a few cats. Uh, last show, if you remember, we didn't have any cats uh, to, to preview for you, but we will today. Uh, we'll begin by showcasing a few cats. Let's get started with that, right? Okay, our first one is Roseanne. Roseanne is a female, two-year-old Siamese mix. She's a big but beautiful girl with her big blue eyes, larger than life personality. She wouldn't mind being the only cat and having her only food bowl. She doesn't like to share. That's Roseanne. Next we have Rena. Rena is one of our kittens, one of the few kittens we have. Uh, she is um, about 15 weeks old. She's very playful like, like most kittens are. Loves a lot of attention. So this is Rena. So I said we only have a few cats to look at today, but uh, our last three will all come together. And I believe they're brothers, correct? This is correct. The, <laughs> this is Larry, Larry, and last of all, Larry. They're about four months old. They are all males. Uh, you could have one or all three, and you would always remember all of their names. These three brothers love to romp and play. Watching them is like an action comedy. Come here, Larry. So we have Larry, Larry, and Larry. Now, is it very common for you to get in three brothers like that, whether it's cats or dogs? Or? It's not uncommon. Uh, the uncommon part would be that they all three look alike. Sure, and they do yeah. all look alike. Yes. What about the chances of them being adopted out together? Do you think that that's a good chance? Or? They do have a very good chance of being adopted together. Well, good. Come on down and get them. They're waiting for you. So I guess we're moving on to the dogs. Yes. Quite uh, a few to look at today. Quite a few dogs. Our first one is Johnny. Johnny is a four-year-old, male-neutered, West Highland terror, Terrier. Commonly, people call them Westies. He's very mild-mannered. He seems to like other dogs and enjoys being held. And West Highland Terriers are popular dogs, aren't they? They're a very popular dog. They do require the grooming, and some people don't like the responsibility of the keeping up on the grooming, which is required about every six weeks to keep them looking like this. So there we have Johnny. Next we have Faith. Faith is about a one and a half year old female spade multi-poo. Multi-poo is a Maltese poodle mix. She loves people and kids, but would prefer to be the only dog. Uh, and she will need lots of patience when it comes to house training. So there we have Faith. Next we have Sandy. Sandy is a two-year-old female Chihuahua mix. She's a little shy at first. Uh, after she gets to know you though, she doesn't leave you alone. She absolutely loves to go outside and she's good with other dogs. She actually rooms with our next dog that we're gonna have on share. So this is Sandy. This is Sandy's roommate, Cher. They did not come in together. They just like to room together because they like company of other dogs. Cher is about a one-year-old female Yorkie mix. She's very energetic, loves to play with other dogs, and really loves her new haircut. And that is because when she come in, she actually looked like a little mop. So this is Cher. Next we have Tumbelina. Tumbelina is about a three-month-old female Chihuahua mix. She's a sweet little girl that loves to be cuddled. She's good with other dogs. She will, you will need to teach her to, uh, 
her potting and leash training. She needs a lot of work on that since she's just a puppy. You can tell she's just a puppy, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, very, very energetic puppy. Thumbelina. Next, this is Peta. Peta actually come in as a family and the rest of his family has been adopted. All that's left is Peta. He's about a four month old male Chihuahua mix. He's a very happy little boy that loves to play with other dogs. Our kennel tech loves to call him Frodo and tell him he would be in the Hobbit movie. Hmm. Here we have Peta. Next we have Woodstock. Woodstock is about a one-year-old male neutered poodle. <laughs> He's an awesome little dog. He's very gentle, kind, attentive. He likes other dogs and seems to love every human. And he absolutely loves to be held. Most poodles his size do like to be in the lap and be held all the time. While you have Woodstock out here, let me ask you a quick question. You, you mentioned, uh, I think it was uh, Cher and Tumbelina are, are roommates. Yes. Uh, and so many of the, the dogs here are roommates, uh, just based on their size and, and the size of the facility that we have here at the Animal Care and Adoption Center. Mm -hmm. When people come down, we'll discuss later about how you can come down and visit us, but when people come down to, to visit or, or to look at some of the animals, um, are they able to go to where the, the dogs, you know, to where their rooms or kennels are? Are they able to see them there? Are they, is there a place where they can bring, that you bring the dogs out and they can share some time with them? Yes, the first thing they do is to go to where the, the animals are and then choose the one that they think may be fitting right into their family. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a room we can take them into so they're not out in the heat or out in the noise. Mm -hmm. They get a little bit of yeah. private time with their potential new family member? Yes, that. Yeah. And if they have another dog, they can be introduced to that other dog to see if they get along. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, we have Cookie. Cookie is about a three-month-old female Chihuahua mix. She's a unique little, little girl with her little chocolate color and little brindle on her paws. She loves other dogs, but especially loves her dinner time. And as you can tell, even though she's a puppy, she's not quite as hyperactive as the other puppies. She, she can is be real, quiet. right? She looks like a statue. Yes, she is real. <laughs> and that's Cookie. This is Cream. Cream is about a two-year-old female terrier mix. She might seem like she doesn't like you at first, but if you show her a little love and patience, she gives it back tenfold. And she loves to go for walks. And that's cream. Next we have Minnie and Mo. <laughs> the tricolored one is Mo, which is a male, about three month old Chihuahua mix. And Minnie is his sister. So she's also about a three month old Chihuahua mix. And what more can I say about puppies? Puppies, 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 and more puppies. And these two are, are all happy, eager to learn and to love. So brother and sister, they don't necessarily have to go together. They can be adopted separately. Minnie and Mo. This is Molly. Molly's about a two-year-old female wire-haired dachshund. She loves to go for walks and she's good with other dogs. She's a little thin right now, but nothing some good dog food can't fix. She's actually put on some weight since she's been with us. So that's Molly. This is MacGyver. MacGyver is about a one-year-old spaniel mix. He's a very sweet little boy. He's, a little no, he's known to be a little sneaky, and he will need a secure fenced yard so that sneaking, he can't sneak out. Also, I believe that if he had a family that would pay a lot of attention to him, that maybe that would, would work and go away. So this is MacGyver. Okay, next we have Chucky. 
Chucky is about a one-year-old male neutered lab mix. As you can tell, he's full of lots of energy. He loves to run around in the yard. He loves to be the center of attention. <laughs> he needs some leash training, but with a little help from a friend, he will do just great. So this is Chucky. Chucky? So those are all of our dogs? Those are all of and our dogs all of our cats, and all correct? of our cats. Uh, let me ask you a question about our dogs. You mentioned a couple of times uh, um, that they may have come in a little undernourished. Uh, they may be a little skinny. They still need a little bit of food, uh, good food in their systems. Yes. Um, if someone wants to come out uh, and, and uh, look at some of the dogs that we're showcasing here, and they're interested in one of these dogs that just arrived recently and still need a little bit of more nourishment, do you keep them here for a while first, or do you uh, just give the family the, the right information as far as how to take care of them and, and, and increase their weight and the type of food that they should give them and allow them to adopt them? Already. Yeah, we allow them to adopt them and take them home at that time. We do give them uh, all the information that they need and um, advice on how to put on the weight in a, in a productive manner. Sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, you know, recently in the, in the past few shows, we knew the summer was coming. We're in the middle of the summer here in Arizona, as, it, as you all know. Uh, some of you are watching from other states or maybe even other countries, and you don't know how hot it is here. It is very hot. And uh, we've been very fortunate to have Julie and, and uh, Linda and, and some others on the show to tell us over the past few months about the dangers of having your pets outside or not giving them uh, fresh water or cool water or the proper shade. Uh, but one of the issues that people don't think about very often, unless they see it on the news, and, and once they see it on the news, it's a really big deal. But we think about it all the time because being a police officer, I hear about it frequently being in the animal care and control business, you hear about it frequently, and we both yes. are concerned about this. It's the issue of leaving a, a pet unattended in a vehicle. Uh, can correct. you share some information about leaving your pets unattended in a vehicle with us? Well, uh, our best thing is, is to, the best thing is to leave them at home. Uh, even in a short period of time, even at 78 degrees, it could be hot enough to, to kill an animal in a matter of just minutes. Uh, we have several uh, posters that we use here and one of our favorites is this one here that friends don't make friends wait in hot cars definitely leave Fido at home that's where he'd like to be where it's cool uh, you can only imagine yourself when you get into that hot car after it's been parked for a while and if you had an animal in that car just imagine what it would be like and they can die real quick sure the temperature of a vehicle especially here in Arizona this time of the year uh, increases quickly. Uh, whether the windows are down a little bit or not doesn't really make a difference. Studies have shown that, uh, that having your window cracked a little bit does not make a difference. Uh, the temperature in a vehicle at this time of year, this, today for example, where it's going to be about 102, 103 degrees, within a matter of 20 to 30 minutes can be up to 130, 140 degrees. Um, no one can survive that, your animals and your friends included. So please uh, take Mary's advice seriously and leave your pets at home. Uh, same thing, of course, is with your children, but today we're talking about pets, so please make sure you leave your pets at home and take care of them, uh, give them the best treatment that you possibly can. Um, we should still probably mention what we've been mentioning for the last few months, and maybe you could speak to that, about fresh water, um, appropriate shade, taking your animals out for walks at the right time of day or night. Yes. Maybe you could touch on those topics real yeah. quick. Definitely make sure they have clean potable water, um, that they have it where they can't tip it over. If they tend to be a, a breed of animal that likes to put their paws in it, then we suggest that they get maybe a kiddie pool to put water in so that then they can stand in that to, to uh, cool their feet off. Um, also, plenty of shade. Tree is not a shade. Um, make them shade so that they can get in out of the sun. And of course, required is something like a doghouse so they can get out of the, the elements. Okay. And uh, I know that you have an upcoming event that we're going to speak about in a moment, but first I want to ask you one more thing. Um, we are right around the corner from celebrating our Independence Day on the 4th of July. People like to celebrate the 4th of July just like they celebrate uh, New Year's Eve with fireworks. Yes. Fireworks are a lot of fun, but they're also very dangerous. They're also very dangerous for our pets, not just because of the danger of the fire, but the danger of the noise. That is correct. Uh, they they uh, definitely can, can scare a small animal or any type of animal. Maybe you could speak to that. 
Yeah, the best thing to do is to protect your pet during any time, and it's even a few days before the 4th of July where they like to shoot them off even if it's not legal. Uh, an animal can become very scared and can run, and before they know it, they're miles away from home mm -hmm. and very lost and scared. And um, In the meantime, it's very dangerous because they could end up with all the traffic, especially 4th of July, mm -hmm. everybody watching the fireworks at night that the, that the city of Casa Grande puts on, then they could end up um, hit by a car and unfortunately could end up uh, losing your animal from it. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and not just that, but the actual fireworks themselves uh, are, can be dangerous. You know, the, the handheld type rockets, you, have, you don't know which way they're going to go. And, mm -hmm. and even the most simple type of firework that you can think of would be a sparkler. Uh, people don't realize that a sparkler burns at about 1200 degrees. That's a lot. That, that's mm -hmm. a very high temperature. And if one of those sparklers were to, were to fall or the parts of it were to fall on one of your pets, it could definitely hurt them. So please be very careful around the holidays where we use fireworks in your pets. All right, so let's talk about the upcoming event. Our upcoming event is our um, mid-year low-cost clinic. It's going to be on Saturday, July 19th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at Gilbert Park, which is uh, Treckle and Trinity Place by the Evergreen School. Uh, rabies shots are $10. There will be other vaccines available for your animal, and also you buy your city license at the same time. So it's a great opportunity to save some money and get your pet legal. Excellent. Well, Mary, could you share with our viewers how they can find the Animal Care and Adoption Center or how they can call us? Okay, our phone number is 520-426-9300. It is a voicemail system and they just leave a message with their name, phone number, address, their question, concern, complaint, and one of us will call them back. If they'd like to visit us, uh, we're not here all the time, but majority of the time we have ourselves or a volunteer here and we're at 202 East 1st Avenue that is south of the railroad tracks. All right. So uh, some of the ways that you can keep up with us, of course, are casagrandeaz.gov, the city website, and has links to the Animal Care and Adoption Center, uh, petfinder.com, mm -hmm. uh, azpetplates.org. Of course, there's the Facebook and Twitter accounts for the city and you'll find information about the animals that we've showcased today and in the past. And of course, as you're watching this on, on Cox Channel 11, uh, we'd ask that you share this show and these animals that we've showcased today with your friends and your family. It's important, uh, and I'll tell you why it's important, because we know what really works and, uh, when it comes to showcasing these animals. We, we have this show every month that you watch. Uh, we have uh, newsletters that go out, we have our website, and we have our, our social media sites. And the animals, the pets, the cats, the dogs, and sometimes some other pets here mm. and there, um, they really do get adopted. Uh, and some of you have adopted some of these pets. So we thank you very much, and, and, and we really appreciate you finding them a forever home. But there are many more pets out there to be adopted, and there's many more people out there looking for a pet. Um, and this is the way to do it. So please turn them on to this show. Please turn them on to the different venues of, 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 uh, of finding out about the animals that we have at the, at the Casa Grande Animal Care and Adoption Center. Mary, is there anything else you'd like to add? I think that's it, Thomas. All right, well, uh, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. We can't wait to see you next time on Parade of Paws. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.